Hello there everybody, this is Philip and today we are talking about the 7 things I wish I knew about when first starting Blender. But before we get started, take it easy, these aren't some pro tips for the professional artist, but rather some small tips that'll help you out big time when first booting up Blender with little to no knowledge at all. Beginner stuff. So without any further ado, let's hop straight into it, starting with number 1, the Node Wrangler. The Node Wrangler is a free add-on which comes shipped with Blender. It provides the ability to control shift click on any node to show how it looks while building a material or geometry node setup, letting you visualize the effect it's going to have on your final outcome. This is why it's so useful, and I, like many other people, use it on a daily basis to speed up our workflow and better understand what we are working with. You can activate it on the top bar by going to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and on the top right of the new window you can type in Node Wrangler and then it should pop out as soon as you tick the box, you should be good to go. At number 2 comes snapping. Snapping allows you to position an object in a way that aligns it to vertices, edges, faces and blenders built in increments. This allows you to place your objects perfectly. I mostly use it to place my objects onto a plane or a desk I want them to sit on, without clipping too much. Snapping is a powerful positioning and modeling tool that can greatly affect your speed, efficiency and output quality by shaving off time and giving you the precision you need to get the best results possible. Number 3 would be box projections. Sometimes you need a good UV unwrap, especially when you want to use your models for games and animation. But when it comes to simple static objects that don't really move too much and are just sitting somewhere, you can use a box projection. That means that your texture gets projected onto your object from all sides and it even gives you a slider to blend your edges so you can't even see the seams. That makes it the perfect way to visualize something quickly but can also be used for final renders as shown here where the result looks good enough to pass as a professional unwrap. You can use box projections by getting a texture coordinate node, plugging the object output into a mapping node and then passing it to the vector input of your image texture. Then set the projection mode from flat, which is what you would normally use, to box and adjust the blend factor until it suits you. So number 4 would be Archimesh. With a wide range of scalable ready-to-use doors, windows, walls and more, Archimesh is the single best add-on for letting you quickly block out a room. It comes with Blender pre-installed and the activation process is the same as with Node Wrangler. Simply press Shift A, go to Mesh and then look at all the different things that Archimesh provides you with. It's all about efficiency and scalability. And you should make use of it in your next and theory scenes as it speeds up work times a lot. Number 5. Bevel your edges. Understanding that every edge is beveled translates into 3D modeling as well. When your knife gets dull, it's basically because the edge has been beveled too much or it has curled. In Blender it's quite the same. Light doesn't reflect off of nothing. So if you want your edge to catch a realistic shine, you need to bevel it. It doesn't need to have 300 segments. But just putting in a single one, or maybe even two, would make it look so much better. Just like the result I'm showing you right here. I would agree that the right side looks a lot cleaner and more realistic, just because it has a bevel on it. Tip number 6 is that you do not need to do everything in Blender. Our Blender is a great all-rounder that can do basically everything from modeling to texturing, animating, video editing, trimming, compositing and most other things that you can think of. There is really no need to do all of that inside Blender. Blender's compositor, even after adding viewport compositing, is quite slow and hard to learn. You could of course try learning either Blender's compositor or Nuke or any other compositing app you want, but there is really no need to do that. For the longest time I have been using GIMP when it comes to image manipulation, because it really offers all of the things that your average editor might need. Later I transitioned to Photoshop, for ease of use and flexibility. You shouldn't be intimidated from compositing and retouching, because in two extra minutes I took this image to the next level. Just look at this. So give it a try in whatever software you want, I just recommend trying something else. Here are some free and paid options you can try. For number 7 we have Loop Tools. Loop Tools is yet another free add-on that ships with Blender. The activation is the same as with Node Wrangler and Archimage and it allows you to do a series of things that will help you out with your modeling. For starters, the circle option allows you to turn any edge loop or selection into a circle, allowing you to make round details very fast and elegantly. There is also an option to flatten the selected area both by normal and by view, allowing you to get intricate hard surface shapes into your design. The G stretch tool allows for straightening selections and loft enables you to interpolate between two edge loops. There is also a relax tool which eases your selection and the space tool which spaces your geometry into more equal parts. All in all, this add-on is very useful and can be used in almost any modeling workflow. 
be it high poly subtooth modeling or low poly art styles. It is simply a must have for everyone and I highly recommend you try it out. So this is it from my list of 7 things I wish I would have known when I started learning Blender. Do you have any tips and tricks? Write them down in the comments down below. Also let me know what you think of this short non-modeling content. It took me quite a while to make and I would like some feedback. That would be it from me and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.